The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the ACHA Power Play live here on the Captain Lou Sports Network on YouTube. And also, we want to welcome you uh, here on the Belly Up Network uh, podcast as we uh, roll along on this uh, January the 24th, 2023. That means we are 52 days away from puck drop for the national championships on the road to Boston for the ACHA 2023 national championships and uh I, again um it's going to be a great show we talk about it all the time uh it's leading up to what's going to be some fantastic hockey in the suburbs of boston massachusetts march 16th through the 21st and uh, we're going to have all five divisions there the men's one two and three and the women's one and two and some great great games and uh a lot of fun. So we hope that if you're there in Boston for the ACHA National Championships, March 16th through the 21st, stop on by and say hi. we get got a great show planned for you tonight. Coming up in a couple of moments, we're going to be joined by the head coach of the number one ranked team in the Central Division of the Women's Division Two, and that is uh, Brianne Veal of uh, Sioux College. They are undefeated 18-0 and to start this 2022-23 season. And uh, they've got a great head start. And Brianne's going to join us to we'll talk about their start to the campaign. And, uh, you know, again, should be, uh, I know they had a big weekend a couple of weekends ago against the two time defending national champion Cinnaboyne team. So we'll talk to uh, Brianne about that. Then at the bottom of the hour, we're going to be joined by Matt Sikosin. He is the head coach of Grand Valley State, uh, they're 10th ranked in men's division one. And uh, they're off to a great start. They've had a long winning streak, and they've got uh, some big games coming up yet, including a crosstown rivalry this weekend in Grand Rapids against Aquinas College. So Matt's going to join us as well here in a few moments. So, again, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. We are powered up by the Belly Up Network of Podcasts, bellyupsports.com. Check out our website. We've got a great bunch of uh, – uh, articles, a great bunch of writers, a uh, great lineup of podcasts as well. Check out bellyupsports.com for the complete list of podcasts that we do have. Uh, all the sports we cover, men's, women's, we cover all the majors, football, basketball, hockey, uh, baseball, soccer, you name it, pro wrestling, all of it. That's bellyupsports.com. We are blessed and privileged to be a part of that uh, network of podcasts. Um, this year again, and we got a lot of great things coming up, including uh, coming up at the national tournament for the ACHA Nationals. We're going to be doing a post game show every night, a wrap up show, if you will, of all the day's events right here on our show, right here on the Captain Lou Sports Network, powered up by Belly Up Sports. So make sure that you are a part of that as well. So, as I mentioned, we got a great show planned for you this after tonight, rather. Uh, on this January the 24th, 2023, we'll go through all the rankings of all five of the divisions, men's and women's, uh, women's one and two, men's one, two, and three. And uh, time permitting tonight, we'll go through the top scorers and goaltenders in uh, division one in the men's and uh, the women's division two is that is what we're spotlighting tonight with our two special guests. So can't wait to bring that for you here tonight on the show as again, I believe we're 52 days away from puck drop, maybe 53. I always forget there's 28 days in February and 31 days in January. So we'll go with 52. How's that? A deck of cards. So we're less than two months away from puck drop for the opening round, the opening day of the national tournament. And what is going to be different this year is all five of the tournaments will be in the same building. Uh, you, in the last seven or eight years, they've been, you know, since 2017, they've been in the same city, different mm -hmm. barns, like four or five different barns in the network, uh, or 
throughout the city the first couple of years. They were in Columbus, and then, of course, they were in uh, uh, St. Louis and Dallas. So let's go now to our guest line, though. Let's uh, We'll talk about that a little later and uh, bring in our first guest tonight. She is the head coach of the Sioux College Cougars, currently ranked number one in the Central Region in Division Two. Brianne Veal. Brianne, thanks for joining us tonight. How are you? Oh, let's see if I got a connection here. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? All right. What seems... Okay. Oh, boy. Let me... Don't go anywhere. It's, this is the, the, the magic of uh, modern technology here. All right. How about that? Here I thought we had it under control. Can you hear me now? Unfortunately, the connection is not good. I'm going to call you right back once we get this figured out. We're going to take a quick break here. Don't go anywhere, everybody. I apologize about that. We're going to call it. We're going to get a hold of her right back. Unfortunately, having a little issue with our technology here. Don't go anywhere here on the ACHA Power Play. We'll be right back. Is it working now? I think I can hear you. I, I think everybody <laughs> all right, can. Perfect. Sorry about that. You know, it's 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 so funny. Is you think you got all the latest equipment and everything, and then one little wire decides to slip just a hair. <laughs> it's just like hitting that. It, it's like hitting the crossbar when you got a breakaway. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the most frustrating thing in the world. How are you, Brianne? Thanks again for joining us. How are you tonight? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. Um, Wow, he, I, I, off to a great start this year. We uh, we talk about it a lot, you know. The first part of the season being the marathon, now it's a sprint. But you guys have picked, or you gals have picked up right where you left off after the first semester. Uh, wonderful start to your season. Thank you. Yeah, it's been quite the year so far. So we're just hoping for a strong second half. Well, I have to ask you. Now, I know last year you went to Nationals and you lost to Assiniboine. You were able to play them a couple of weeks ago and you had a successful weekend. How good did it feel? That has definitely been our favorite win of the year. Wins, actually, since we beat them twice. But that was definitely our favorite game to play, uh, both the competition and also the end result. Now, is it safe to say that they're one of your bigger rivals? I know you play a majority of your games against teams here in the States, but is that one of your biggest rivals? Yeah, I mean, last year our rival was right across the border at Lake Superior State University, mm -hmm. and them not being in our division anymore, everyone needs a rival, so a Cinnaboyne <laughs> seems to be it. <laughs> Um, they're not in our conference, but again, they give us the best competition that we can get, and that's what we're looking for heading into national. So I think that we're probably on their radar just as much as they're on ours. You know, I, I looked at your schedule and I noticed that, uh, I know you don't want to think too far down the road, but I saw that the regionals are coming up in February. Now, how does that work with women's division two? Are, are, if you're like ranked in the top of your region, do you get an automatic buy to nationals or does every team still have to go to regional play? Yeah, so it's pretty interesting with um, the conference. We're in um, a conference and league of our own through the CCWHA, and the top four teams go to regionals. So okay. if you are ranked in the top four within the ACHA in your conference, you're heading to regionals, and it's essentially just 
reseeding you for uh, now. So if we're in first place and we get to regionals and don't have strong games, it definitely will affect us for national play. Well, that's an interesting concept. I, I, I guess I'm glad I asked you that because I was wondering going in, I thought, you know, because I know now you guys at Nash, we would prefer it to not be that way at this point. <laughs> oh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Um, I, no, I know it's uh, with with COVID the last couple of years, or you know, in 2020 and 2021, it was tougher. Obviously, you gals couldn't play, uh, you know, and then you were able to play in nationals last year. How tough was that in the last few years before you know 2021? Well, we didn't have a season in 2020 and then last year our season started in November so we weren't allowed to cross the border until later on in the season and we had to crunch in all of our games in a shorter amount of time so definitely less time for the girls to recover from injuries Um, a lot of focus went into traveling and them studying on the road because again they weren't getting many weekends off And then in January, when another round of COVID happened, we were actually practicing on outdoor rinks. Wow. So we were practicing at 10 o'clock at night on an outdoor <laughs> rink in January. And I get it that we're Canadian and we're used to the cold, but I don't think anyone prepares you for that temperature at that time. Well, I have to tell you, I was raised on Lake Superior. And so I kind of feel you, but... Yeah, I was I was raised up in Munising, up in the UP, but I don't uh, <laughs> I, I don't blame you there. That about five minutes of that would be enough for me. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get more Canadian than what we had last year. So we'd practice <laughs> on the outdoor rinks, and then we'd head across the river to uh, to Saint Marie, Michigan, to play our games where we actually played a Cinnaboyne. And it was a little bit different going from an outdoor rink to an Olympic size oh, arena. I, I bet it was. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of want to touch on that for a minute. I, you know, I, I, I talked to coach Mike on the men's side a few times. I got to know him a few years ago and you know, his, what he was talking about was the ability for you folks to get teams to come up to play up in the Sioux. And now I know that you may have a few more this year because COVID is relaxed, obviously, but, you know, talk about how tough it is to schedule games with uh, the teams here in the States. So we are a little bit different compared to our men's team only because we are in a league through the CCWA. So uh, it's, it's very helpful for us because we play each team twice in the regular season and we swap every year on who travels. So that makes it really easy for our schedule. Obviously there's still some complications with teams being in the United States and not being able to travel internationally for games. So in those instances, we're obviously still playing our home games in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, but for the most part, now that, COVID, knock on wood, is uh, done with, and we can just continue on playing our home games in Canada. Uh, It's it's been much easier for us, and our fans are really happy about that as well. When we do our non-conference this year, we experienced a lot of teams, especially in Assiniboine division with them, uh, Minnesota Duluth Mm -hmm. and Dakota College, all wanting additional games, and they've reached out to play us. So that has been nice just to get to see another conference. And my hope is next year to have a few other um, out of conference games against teams that we haven't seen. So that prior to nationals, we know a little bit, at least about the competition in those conferences a bit more. Now you're playing Dakota college this coming weekend down in Wisconsin. Is that correct? Yes, we are. We're going to meet halfway. So we both don't have to drive the long distance. Well, that's good. I mean, that well, that'll be a nice little getaway for the gals too. Then <laughs> we just got back from a road weekend. Oh, that's but... <laughs> right. You were you were down here in Mount Pleasant. I forgot about that. Playing yeah. Central. Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look at um, your team right now. Uh, the first thing that stands out to me, obviously, is your goaltending. I, I your goals against average is what point eight three or some oh eight three or some ungodly number like that. Uh, you know, <laughs> obviously. They say defense wins championships, but that's a good place to start. That's amazing. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? We definitely focused a lot on recruitment leading into this season, and you can see it. It's very evident um, from our two goaltenders. They're both strong. We are able to count on either one for every single game. Um, we have quite a few seniors when it comes to our forwards and defense, but mm -hmm. the ones that we have added are, have added are very strong, and that's evident when it comes to the amount of goals we've scored this year. So if you're to look at last year compared to this year, the biggest thing is our offensive threat. Oh yeah, I noticed that. I look at you know you've got four gals that are averaging over two points a game, and mm -hmm. that <laughs> that's absolutely amazing too. I mean, you can roll out four lines, it looks like, and not miss a beat. Yeah, we, uh, you know, it's pretty cool to look at the leaderboard and see so many of our players. Like we have six within the top twelve right <laughs> now, and um, our one of our rookies is the leading is leading in points for all of the rookies in the division. So wow. it's pretty nice to see that, especially because some of these players are in their second year and they didn't have the success last year. And you know that they work hard. They're constantly trying to improve. So to see them at the very top, someone like Marie-Pierre Lacour mm -hmm. and Jasmine Grolo, Emily, all of those players, they've, they've, been able to find the net and are finally getting rewarded. So I, you're 18 and 0. Obviously, you've had a, a great season. But if there's one thing, Brianne, that you think the girls might need to work on, or the ladies need to work on a little bit, maybe to I don't know, shore up, if you will, what would that might be? Our biggest thing coming from our coaching staff is staying consistent mm -hmm. and focusing on our game. It can be very difficult to go into every weekend. Obviously, we're the team that has a target on our back. Yeah. We're the team everyone wants to beat right now. And from us to go to two games against Assiniboine and win those very difficult games that we had been thinking about all season and then go back to conference games against Central Michigan, we had a really tough time adjusting and being able to focus just on that game and what that team was doing and how to have the urgency that we had the weekend before. Yeah. So if we stay consistent and we focus on our games, I'm totally fine with other teams having to chase us around. Right. But if we get a little bit complacent, we are going to have issues. And we did see that over the weekend and we gave up a point to central Michigan and, you know, they have a great team, yeah. but I do think that with a little bit more urgency and us having the energy to play the full 60 minutes, we wouldn't have needed overtime for that game. You know, and I know, Brianne, that uh, you don't look too far ahead, but I, I know you got regionals <laughs> and there's a good possibility that you're going to be going to nationals. What do you, what, what do you do with the gals for a month in between regionals and nationals to, to keep them sharp? Oh my gosh. I want to just put them in a bubble so no <laughs> one gets injured. <laughs> right. I don't think I'm allowed to do that, but if I could, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? We, I've never been in this situation as a player and obviously not as a coach because I'm still only a short amount of time into my coaching career. Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, we can talk about how great it is to have 18 wins and no losses, but yeah. until we're holding the national trophy above our heads, every game is a brand new opportunity for us to work on things and to only get better. So did the girls use that last year's tournament as motivation? Definitely. I think the national championship last year really opened everyone's eyes. It yeah. opened my eyes as well. We had a pretty short bench, obviously dealing mm -hmm. with COVID and all of those implications as well, made it very difficult just for us to make sure we had enough players to go to the national championship. And in all honesty, we weren't even thinking that we were going to make it to that tournament, let alone come out with two wins mm -hmm. and lose 3-1 with an empty net goal against the, the champ. Right. So um, I think that that's, that really resonated with a lot of our senior players and coming into this season, they were ready to 
get back to the national championship and make sure that our record was going to be better. And you can see that in the way that they showed up right from the beginning in September and how we've been competing all year. Well, I do remember watching your gals last year and I was just amazed at how well you did with that short bench. I, I, I think there was one other team. I don't know if it was Northern Michigan that I saw and you both had what five or six on the bench. I think it was or whatever. And I was just flabbergasted as how well you kept up. And indeed the two wins that you got were just, you know, I, I applaud you for that. That was amazing. Yeah. I mean, you can see that a lot of teams do have very big benches and we were able to recruit and get our numbers up this year. Mm -hmm. But last year we were, telling teams that they needed extra space we had it on our bench if they wanted some of their players <laughs> over on ours because yeah we were pretty short but and, and you realize at those tournaments when you're playing three four five games in you know in a week that you're going to need more players just to be able to compete and I know that we had a great game against the Cinnaboyne at that tournament mm -hmm. we didn't have as strong of a of an offensive line as we do this year but that's not to say that come the semifinals and even the finals we probably wouldn't have had the legs to compete yeah what is it i i looked at your roster i saw you got a lot of gals from uh, sioux ontario i didn't realize i i i shouldn't say this because it's a dumb statement but obviously <laughs> hockey's big in the sioux but you got a good majority of your gals from right there in uh, sioux ontario yeah, Sioux College as a school has become very popular for students, whether they're wanting to go to school while still staying at home or the type of programs that we now have, whether it's a four-year nursing degree program, we have sports administration, police foundations. So there's a lot of programs that they're able to do their placements at home, find a job at home, and they're saving money while going to school and playing hockey as well. So it's definitely um, a, a really good option for our players, whether they're going to Sioux College or Algoma University. So we do do a lot of recruiting locally, um, whether it's with our um, U18 AA or A program, and then also looking at a few years younger just to get on their radar when they're starting to look at schools. So what, what playing experience and experience did you have before you became the head coach? So I grew up playing boys hockey and I played until I was in grade five. And then I started in the travel program on the female side. And once I graduated from there, I went on to Brock University and played five years with them. Oh, wow. Um, who's your favorite NHL team? <laughs> It's not because they just won the Stanley Cup. It's been my team since I was three years old. Oh, no. <laughs> um, not Colorado. Colorado. Yes. Go Sackick era. Okay. I can live with that. <laughs> I can live with that. Joe right. Sackick and Patrick Waugh, that was my team. So you can't change your team. So all of those really difficult years they had, they finally made up for it last year. Well, I have to tell you, I, I, I don't admit this too much, but I will tell you, I'm – I am a Patrick Waugh fan because Montreal is my second favorite team. And okay. I loved him when uh, I've got family from Montreal, Quebec. And so I, I grew up listening to them and, and kind of watching them. So if it's not the Red Wings, it's the Canadians. And I love Patrick Waugh. I love just his, I don't know, his feistiness and his will, you know, just <laughs> everything about him. You know, obviously he's an all time. Feistiness great. Is, the feistiness is a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You know, especially when he got in that fight with, uh, you know, with oh, God, what the heck's his name? I can't remember his name. No, that, it's blasphemy not remembering that from 97, but anyways, I digress. Well, Hey, <laughs> Brianne, this has been fun. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Sorry about the little glitch with the phone. You know, like I said, I must've hit something off the goalpost, but at least no we were problem. able to get That's you on. Favorite. And, uh, well, good luck this weekend. Safe travels down to Ashland and then with the regionals. And, uh, well, good Lord willing, I hope to uh, meet up with you in Boston in the middle of March. I'll stop and say hi and uh, good luck the rest of the year. Thanks for coming on. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you.
Brianne Veal, the head coach of the Sioux College Cougars women's hockey team. Right now, they are ranked number one in the Central Region. Let's uh, see if we can't bring up those uh, the uh, um, rankings here and just kind of get a look at the women's rankings in uh, Division Two. There we go. Right now, you can see there's uh, four different regions, and there's the Northeast, the Central. The west and the southeast. The region that's uh, Brian we just mentioned is the central region. Sioux College right now ranked number one at uh, twelve. They're actually eighteen and all. These are old rankings. Um, the latest ones will be coming up shortly. So we'll go back to from uh, December fourth. Adrian College number two. CMU number three. So you talk about a big matchup this past weekend with uh, both colleges uh, right there in the top three. And she mentioned the top four get in the regional tournament. And uh, Lawrence Tech at number four. These subject to change, number five. And then uh, Miami at number six. And all the way down, you see it to seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, it's a round It's a uh, round robin tournament in Division Two for the women. So they each are guaranteed three games. And then the winner of each pool will go into the semifinals and the finals. And Assiniboine is the team right now to beat. As you can see, they are ranked number one in the West. Uh, they were undefeated until a couple of weeks ago, as we mentioned, as uh, Sioux College defeated them in two games. And so, yeah, it's uh, it's quite exciting at the Division II level for the women. And, uh, you know, for those of you that haven't watched women's hockey, I know uh, or I've only seen bits and pieces of it. What really impresses me is the speed and, you know, the finesse and, you know, the good the good game, obviously the good teams. It's, it's amazing to watch. And this Sioux College team, if you get a chance to watch them, I highly recommend it. And they, they're they very potent. She mentioned the goal scorers. We'll see if we can't, uh, you know, we can kind of check it out here. Just um, I, I look at the, some of the top scorers for uh, the women's team for Sioux College. And you, you talked to, she talked about Marie Pierre LaCour's 44 points in 18 games. So she's averaging almost two and a half points a game, 15 goals, 29 assists. Uh, Jasmine Grulo at 39 points, and then Emily at 38, Brooke Brazu at 35. Top four right there, over two points a game. Then uh, with the other thing that is just absolutely amazing, we talk about it, is the goaltending. Again, 0.83 goals against. Uh, one goalie is 0.82. That's Emily Hansen. Cassidy Dobson, 0.86. Uh, Emily Hansen's got five shutouts and Cassidy Dobson with two. So there you go. I mean, it's insane how, you know, you can, uh, that it doesn't get much better than that. They've given up a total of 15 goals in 18 games and their save percentages are at 939 and 941. So uh, again, absolutely amazing with what they can do. And, uh, you know, that's why they're on top. That's why they're one of the best teams in the country, or I should say in both countries with them being north of the border in uh, Sioux, Canada. So I want to thank Brianne Veal for joining us here, the head coach of the Sioux College women's team. And again, they play this weekend against uh, uh, Dakota College of Botno in Ashland, Wisconsin. Ashland, Wisconsin. And uh, then their next, I believe after that, then they've got uh, regionals coming up down outside of Flint here in uh, lower Michigan. So you're watching the ACHA Power Play live here on the Captain Lou Sports Network on YouTube. We're powered up by the Belly Up Network of Podcasts, Belly Up Sports and Belly Up Media. We want to thank them as always for joining us or for being kind of our the backbone of our show here. And uh, we really appreciate that. We're very blessed to be a part of the uh, Belly Up Network of Podcasts where you can also watch the Captain Lou Extravaganza on Wednesday nights. We will have another show tomorrow. We'll talk mostly football. We'll kind of mix in a little bit of hockey as well. Maybe a little Major League Baseball. Who knows? With spring training coming less than a month away as well. So still to come on the show tonight here on the ACHA Power Play, Matt Sikosin. He is the head coach of Grand Valley. Uh, they're right now ranked 10th in the country in men's Division One, coming off a big weekend against uh, Davenport. Uh, mm -hmm. Another Grand Rapids area school that uh, uh, is turning into quite a hotbed for Division One hockey in the ACHA men's side as well. We all know in the ACHA, the D3 level is pretty much dominated by the state of Michigan winning, 
I believe, nine out of the last 10 or 10 out of the last 11 um, national championships at the D3 level. But in D1, there's been quite a quite a resurgence of hockey in the Grand Rapids area at the D1 level. All right now looking up at the possibility of a – well, there is going to be a new champion in Division One because Lindenwood – went to the NCAA level this year. So they were the champions last year, defeating Adrian College in the finals. Now they will. Uh, we will see uh, who's going to take over the reins. Speaking of Grand Valley State, let's uh, go back to our guest line and let's bring in the head coach of Grand Valley, Matt Sikosin. Matt, thanks for taking time out tonight. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Hopefully everything's going accordingly for you over there today so far. Well, so far, so good. We had a little glitch with our first guest, like I told her. You know, I must have hit one off the crossbar on a breakaway, but I think we've got it figured out. So welcome to the show. Um, great start for you guys, Matt. I know you had a nice couple of weekends after the break with uh, Calvin against Calvin and Davenport. Uh, good start for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, sort of coming new to the team this year. We have a strong group of upperclassmen that are – uh, still intact. Uh, we'll be fortunate. We will have a majority of them uh, next year as well. So it's uh, it's been good. Uh, off to the races. Played a ton of games that first semester. I yeah. think we were a top in our division in terms of games played. Uh, and now it's to the nitty gritty, a little bit more chunk of our GLCHL conference. And then uh, we'll go into conference uh, play and then uh, eventually nationals. And, uh, and that will just vary dependent where we finish on the final ranking. You know, before you before you came on the call, Matt, where I was touching on real quick how much um, how the how competitive the D one scene has gotten just in the Grand Rapids area in the last few years. You guys making the jump to D one, Davenport's always been there. Uh, Aquinas now at D one, of course. Calvin, they've uh, really improved in the last couple of years. It's fun to watch and fun to be a part of uh, the Grand Rapids hockey scene in D one. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's changed immensely. Obviously, I was part of it as a player. Uh, obviously, being at Davenport, that's where I went and played. Uh, so I was part of that first year group um, mm-hmm. that went to that D1 jump. And then obviously, uh, seeing the other schools in the area, let alone uh, in the Great Lakes region, um, that have shifted yeah. into it. Yeah, it's definitely made it more competitive uh, and definitely uh, more regional based. Uh, ACHA is still strong in that Midwest territory. Mm-hmm. Um, so we luck out there for not having too big of road trips. Uh, of, of being mandatory so uh, it works well and yeah i mean uh this being our second year at the d1 level uh last year uh sort of at 500 overall for the record but we did have uh, success at the end of the year there winning our conference tournament um so that was a high note to end the season on uh, and then now it's can we retain it and uh can we move on and advance to a national tournament now matt you mentioned it was uh kind of a it, it's been a kind of a quick transition for you we all know that you took over kind of late, you know, relatively speaking, this uh, past fall or late summer. Uh, how difficult was that for you? I mean, have you, has your head stopped spinning yet? Yeah, I don't know if it was extremely difficult. Um, obviously, it was very sudden. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I spoke with Carl a lot throughout the entire process that he was going through. Mm-hmm. Um, and sort of once he made his statement of what was occurring, I was like, hey, I really want to get back on the men's side. And this is the opportunity. So we had discussions with the team board and our university staff, and I was offered the position. Um, and then it sort of worked out to retain Walker Rand as my assistant, who I'd also coached previously at my time at Davenport uh, while he was playing. So yeah. uh, sort of full circle for us. And uh, to have a strong group as we are just made it that much more fun. Uh, it's definitely icing on the cake uh, to make it an easy transition coming from the women's side for the past couple of seasons. No, you, you talk about the guys, you know, you, you tasted a little bit of success, uh, you know, at the end of the year, winning the conference tournament, that's big. And then this year, um, how's, you know, obviously their focus is getting the nationals and they see the rankings. Um, are, how difficult is it for them not to kind of look at that and say, well, maybe we're there, we can let up a little bit. Uh, it's definitely something we harp on uh, all the times in the room, uh, both Walker and I having made it. Uh, almost to the final, Walker making it to a semifinal, me making it to a final as a player, and obviously being around it as an assistant in my time as well. Um, we sort of know what it takes to get there and the little things that matter, and that's just all we've advocated. We haven't really harped on guys too much, and like I said, we have the good, strong upper class. 
um, and they sort of self-police the team and uh, they keep everybody in line and our practices uh, we have a pretty deep roster this year it tends looks like sort of everybody was capable uh, to do it did it just because of uh, the whole issues of the past couple of seasons yeah. so it's just made our practices that more competitive um, just because there's so many guys and we have so many guys that are very similar to each other uh, essentially anybody can get inserted in the lineup so I think that's probably been one of the key components to our success as having no lackadaisiness in practice everybody's uh, got to bring their game and do what they can and then obviously uh, we can attest to the leadership and everybody sort of buying in and listening and definitely asking questions when they need to um, it's definitely made uh, the culture great and uh, I think that's why we've been able to go on this run here so far throughout the season we're joined by Matt Sikosin, the head coach of uh, Grand Valley State University, uh, currently ranked 10th in men's Division I, uh, off to a great start. Matt, I look at uh, the stats on your team, and you guys can put the puck in the net. Uh, you know, Gage Thrall, Shane Haggerty, Zachary Kipp, uh, all over 40 points. Um, you got four goals, four 20-goal scores. But, you know, obviously it takes a success on both ends, but – You've got some firepower this year. It's kind of exciting to watch. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was evident last year that a lot of games, but unfortunately, we also gave up a lot of goals last year. So that Mm -hmm. was one of the transitions we made uh, to start off the year was being far more defensively conscientious just because we know uh, we have the skill and ability to put pucks in the net, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, And now it's putting guys in the lineup combinations as best we could. Obviously, we did deal some injury. uh, So we had to shuffle those around for a bit of the season, but now it's sort of back to where we need it to be and uh, yeah everybody's got opportunities to score every shift uh, and yeah as you mentioned Gage Thrall being up there in the top five points and a couple other guys lingering around that top 10 mark um, it's great to see the balance across because they're not all on the same line you know you bring up a great point though about having to kind of get a little more defensive minded I'm not saying you're not but it, it, what I notice when I go to nationals to watch and broadcast the games Matt is just how the defensive scheme and it's the intensity just has turned up almost tenfold, man. It's, it's incredible. You can see these teams that go in scoring, you know, whatever you got goal scores, 80, 90 goal points and boy, defense is still the name of the game. Oh yeah. I mean, a uh, great coach once told me when I was younger, he's like uh, forward score goals, defense, win games, goalies, win championships. And that's sort of the mentality that seems to be pretty consistent across almost every level of play. Um, so it's something we're really uh, stringent on. Uh, Walker being a defenseman, me being a former goaltender. So it's something we sort of pride ourselves on, and it's uh, limiting the goals against. And we've done that this year, and we, our average is uh, looking pretty well in terms of our goals for compared to goals against. Uh, and, yeah, just as you mentioned it, uh, as you move longer into the season, the goals get harder and harder to come by. And by having guys with the ability to score uh, and them being uh, able to play defensively, it's uh, probably a recipe for success on our part. So uh, we'll see where we can end up in the final ranking. Um, yeah. Obviously right now sitting at 10, as you mentioned, uh, it's a good spot for us. Um, and we'll see how the remainder of our schedule, along with everybody else in the top 10, how they fare uh, throughout the remainder of their regular seasons to see where everyone sort of pans out at the end of it. You know, and you got you got a fun series coming up this weekend. I'll get to watch it firsthand uh, broadcasting the Aquinas games, playing Aquinas College. It's always fun, to, you know, to continue those crosstown rivalries. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, actually, when I uh, took over the program at GV uh, late in the summer, there uh, Aquinas was originally not on a schedule oh, okay. uh, outside of that Grand Rapids Sports Hall of Fame yeah. game. Um, so uh, we worked out in the rankings there, and obviously faced each other. And then now with this two game stand, uh, both at Aquinas is how it worked out for this season. Um, so that will be our, our seer, weekend series. And obviously, both teams having some talent uh, from the Metro Grand Rapids area. It's always a good rivalry. Uh, we know the crowd will be bumping there at Southside, so it'll be an exciting atmosphere to play in. Uh, and obviously, yeah, we've we've seen what Aquinas has been able to do on home ice. It seems like they get that six-man from uh, the crowd, <laughs> yeah. uh, and they're able to do some stuff. So uh, we'll definitely uh, be ready to go, and or we're excited for the weekend series. You know, and you got some interesting matchups. I see you got Purdue Northwest on your schedule too. So you, you and Carl get to uh, shake hands before a couple of games. Yeah, yeah. So we had the one game earlier there to sort of close out the first semester. Yeah. Uh, actually, right before we played Aquinas. So that uh, now we'll get uh, the second league game on the Thursday evening at uh, our rink at Griff's Georgetown. And then we're actually playing in a partially outdoor game on the 10th uh, oh, wow. down there, uh, uh, just south of their campus, actually. 
uh, in Crown Point, Indiana. I think it's called uh, Dog Park or something like that. Uh, so it has a roof, but it's open on the sides. Uh, they've sort of done it since their program's inauguration the past couple of years. I think they tried to do it later in February and it sort of got uh, weather permitting uh, canceled. So hopefully this year, yeah. knock on wood, we'll be good to go and uh, enjoy a nice evening outdoor game, which I have yet to partake in as a player and or coach. Oh, wow. So that will be exciting. Yeah, that, that, that should be fun. You know, and I, you know, you mentioned it, you got your conference tournament coming up at the end of uh, February. It, it It's a great, great way to keep your guys, uh, I don't know, just ready to go for nationals for lack of a better word. And I know you guys are going to, I think you guys are going to have the target on your back after you went in and won that last year. Oh yeah. I mean, we flat out saw it in the two regular seasons games against Adrian this year, <laughs> uh, and how much uh, the trophy meant to them. And, me looking at it in the locker room, unfortunately, the plaque from when I was playing is no longer on it. It's all Grant, or it's all Adrian on there wow. currently. So uh, we're excited to get our plaque on there from next year, and then we're hoping to add another one this year. But uh, we know it'll definitely be tough to retain. Uh, we know them 100%. Uh, yeah. We're probably their biggest arch nemesis right now in conference <laughs> play, uh, just because of that one game last year. Um, but obviously, we know everybody else, whoever we end up facing in that opening round, and then hopefully in the semifinal. Uh, we know everyone's going to have a target on our back because at this point in time, we'd be the second highest ranked uh, team in the tournament. You wouldn't have it any other way, would you? No, nothing's <laughs> worth having unless it's hard. That'll That's be- what we talked about this past week, uh, coming into the Davenport weekend, obviously a, a big one in regards to the coaching staff side of things. Yeah. We know uh, where their program sort of stood after our first series, and it's just keeping the guys engaged and understanding like, hey, every game matters, every shift counts, and they flat out came out and did it. Um, so now it's continuing again and yeah we may end up facing them again here in a couple weeks Uh, and then hopefully if we advance from there we'll most likely face calvin yet again Um, so it'll be interesting uh turn of events in just a few weeks and sparking up rivalries to make them even more intense boy it doesn't get any easier holy cow and so you started at davenport Uh, talk a little bit about uh your um playing experience and then your coaching experience before you came on here as the men's coach at grand valley yeah so uh End of playing career, yeah, I finished up at Davenport. I was fortunate. Uh, that was sort of when we went from the transition of uh-huh. D2 to D1. Um, so I partaked in both, um, and I was a member of the 2011 D1 National Championship team. Oh, wow. uh, and then sort of advanced from there as we went through the D1 rankings. And uh, my senior year, 2012-13, uh, we did win the GLCHL uh, conference tournament uh, against Adrian. Um, so that rivalry was there for a while, and now it's cool to see it on this side of me coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I went on, um, was an assistant coach with Forest Hill Central High School for three seasons, um, simultaneously functioning as the third assistant coach on Davenport's men. The one team did a lot of stuff behind the scenes there, primarily video and some other things regarding equipment. Um, and I was uh, part of the DU coaching staff for six seasons as an assistant on the men's D1 side. Um, and then simultaneous after four still central was done there those two years, I did coach at Fox motorcycle club okay. on the tier one side of things for a couple of seasons. Uh, and then I got offered to take over the women's program at Davenport in 1920. So just before COVID. Yeah. Um, and that was my first, uh, opportunity to take over a team as a head coach and sort of run things the way I thought they wanted to be run. Uh, so I got that experience. I did it for that year. And then obviously the following year, Davenport, we did play a semi-condensed uh, COVID year schedule. Yeah. So I was fortunate to get some games in there. And then um, once Phil Sweeney stepped down at Davenport, uh, there was sort of an opportunity there for me to go back on the men's side there. Unfortunately, I wasn't selected. And then I had the chance to go to Grand Valley. Um, fortunately, uh, those are both levels of coaching currently right now. It's not my full-time job. So I had to make a decision for my family of what uh, yeah. I waited for the time that I had. So I transitioned to Grand Valley last year on the women's side, uh, inherited a great group of girls. Once again, upperclassmen strong, um, had to bring in some players, but that was very late. So it was a different scenario. Um, and we had a successful season. Yeah. Um, we sort of swept Aquinas. So that was a good rivalry for us last year on the women's side. And it is again this year. And, you know, we made some good things happen and I was able to recruit a strong freshman class, bring in eight players, and now they're off to the races, and uh, they just got ranked 18 today uh, in the women's division one. So it's good to see them carry over. Yeah. Um, we were able to retain some coaches that would have been my assistants as co-coaches, and they're doing a great job. And then, yeah, I got uh, the opportunity to come back to the men's side, which is obviously one of my goals, what I was trying to do. Uh, and fortunately, I didn't have to move to make it happen. I got to stay and uh, be with the program. I was sort of around uh, from the outside looking in, 
and now I get to deal with them on the day to day. So it's been a good transition. Uh, works out well for my primary uh, job in my family life. And yeah, the, the team is uh, fun to be around. So it makes it exciting every day with them, whether it be practicing games. Do you get a chance to watch any NHL games? Please tell me you're a Red Wings fan. My last guest was an Avalanche fan. Please don't tell me you're an Avs fan. Yeah, I mean, I grew up around that rivalry. Uh, <laughs> I got into hockey because of the Red Wings' success. I remember vividly as a kid being at a family, uh, either wedding or some type of uh, baby christening, bringing the portable TV back in the day with an uh, antenna, watching the Wings uh, whoop on Philly. Um, so, yeah, I grew up a Wings fan. Beauty. Um, now that I got older and have a lot of friends that actually play professionally, I think I'm more or less an overall hockey fan. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I do watch uh, what I can, and I try and watch a lot of my buddies <laughs> that are playing. Matt, this has been great. I appreciate you taking time out. I know you're busy this time of year. As they say, this is the sprint part of the schedule. Now, the marathon was before Christmas. Now we're getting there, man. Less than two months to go before uh, – the nationals and uh boy what a fun time of year eh oh yeah yeah everybody's got to be on high alert and obviously <laughs> everything means a little bit more so it's now it's trying to keep the young guys nerves at bay and tell them it's another game and obviously from us just being as attentive as possible to see who's doing what so when the time comes and it is a tie game say at the end of the third period in the national championship you have your guys who you want to put out there there you go well matt it's been a pleasure i appreciate it i'll uh Try to look for you Friday and say hi. I'll be there at the game, obviously, both games this weekend with you and Aquinas. So I really yeah, appreciate it. Say hi. Will do. Thanks for coming on, and uh, good luck this weekend. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you Friday. All right, Matt. Thank you. Matt Sikosin, the head coach of uh, Grand Valley State, ranked 10th right now in the uh, nation in men's Division One, and uh, always a pleasure to talk with uh, them over at Grand Valley. Uh, Carl Trojan started the D1 when when they got to D1 and now Matt's taken over and he hasn't uh hasn't let up. They're uh, on a great roll right now, ranked 10th in the country and uh they've got a big weekend with Aquinas. Aquinas is uh, right around 500 this year, but as he mentioned, it's going to be a big weekend set for them. They Aquinas gets a good home crowd uh usually for the uh weekend games there. So, you know, it uh should be a pretty good setup as well, I'll tell you. I'm just uh Losing my marbles here tonight. Try to take these off real quick. There we go. I can hear myself think a little better, maybe. Uh, who knows? Anyways, again, two minutes in the box for, I don't know, unnecessary content, whatever you want to call it. But thanks to Matt Sikoser for coming on the show tonight here. And uh, let's take a look at those rankings if we can real quick. Uh, bring them up for you here on the, uh, the old video screen. And uh, let's see if we can... Bring those up, the magic of, uh, there we go. Now, these were the latest rankings as of last week. And uh, Minot State, number one, 19 and 0. Adrian College at number two. And Ohio at number three. Uh, Nevada, Las Vegas at four. Liberty at five. Uh, Central Oklahoma at six. Indiana Tech at seven. Uh, they had a big weekend against Aquinas winning up in Grand Rapids, uh, five to two, or seven to five, rather, on Friday. And then winning nine nothing on Saturday. So, they improved to 23, one and one Jamestown at eight uh, uh, Pittsburgh at nine grand Valley. Now 24 and five with those two wins this past weekend against Davenport. They're at 10th Maryville at 11 Lawrence tech at 12 Illinois state 13. You can see it Niagara at 14 Calvin at 15 Arizona at 16 Stony Brook at 17 Arizona state at 18 Pennsylvania university IU of Pennsylvania at 19 and uh, Utah rounding it out in the top 20. Now, the thing to keep in mind, again, is that with the um, the way the tournament works, it's the top 20. Well, they take 20 teams in the Division One tournament. Now, we explained it on past shows, but how it works is uh, it's, a, it's not round robin. There's no pool play. It's one and done. It's bracketed, single elimination. So, you know, it's uh, you got to be on it the whole time. And there has been – last year was amazing, the close games. Obviously, the five-overtime affair. Uh, you know, you had the uh, one the overtime game with Indiana Tech and uh, Central Oklahoma. Uh, you can't take a period off in the national tournament. So, as far as getting in, I believe there's six automatic berths. I always get it mixed up. And then the rest is at large. So – Ideally, you want to be obviously in about the top 12, top 14. That way you've got an opportunity in case you don't 
win your conference or if you get in a conference tournament and you that particular conference tournament, the automatic bid goes to the conference champion. For example, the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. We talked with uh, head coach Frank DeCristofaro of Indiana Tech a couple of weeks ago on the show. That's how their conference champ or their automatic qualifier gets determined is the conference championship. So, you know, in some of these other conferences, you want to get up there. If you get knocked off, you know, it uh, you know, it may not bode well for you. And, uh, and it's funny because in the conference tournament last year in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference, I go back to that, the semifinal game between Aquinas and Michigan Dearborn came down to overtime. The winner of that got the last berth in the last – in the uh, in the national tournament, and Michigan Dearborn ended up winning a game in that tournament last year, and uh, they defeated uh, Aquinas in overtime in the conference tournament. So, a lot of these conference tournaments mean a lot for that automatic berth, just like in the NCAA basketball. So, ideally, like I said, if you're in Division One, you want to finish kind of in the top, you know, top two, top or top twelve to be safe, top fourteen. You figure in the conference champions, you know, the, you know. So, what to be safe? That's where you want to be. That way, you're not sweating it out right towards the end of February, first of March. So you can kind of make your plans if you think you're going to be going to the national tournament. So, want to thank Matt Sakosin for joining us here on the uh, ACHA Power Play. We got a few minutes left of the show tonight. Let's take a look at what some of the other rankings um, in uh, at the Division Two level. Let's go to men's Division Two, shall we? And uh, we'll see if we can't uh, bring that screen up here for you. Kind of give you an idea what those rankings look like. As again, how it works in uh, the men's division two. Uh, let's go right down to the start men's two. Now these are from a month ago. Those latest rankings will be coming out probably tomorrow or Thursday. But again, the top two teams in each region, they get to bypass uh, regional tournaments coming up here in the uh, end of February, mid-February, they get an automatic berth to the national tournament and pool play. So the top two teams in the Northeast region, Massachusetts and Northeastern, they would get the automatic berth then three through 14, as you can see on the screen. They would play in a single elimination bracketed tournament. And then uh, the top two teams out of those would go to the nationals in Boston. So, in the central region, Lindenwood and St. Thomas would get the automatic berths. And then 3 through 14, led by Trine and Concordia, Wisconsin. Also, uh, you know, Minnesota Cookston. They would all play right down through to uh, Jamestown for the opportunity for the last two spots. And I got to tell you, these regional tournaments are a blast. If you're anywhere near them this year, I highly recommend watching them. It's intense. It's winner go home. And it's what makes it that much more fun as a uh, spectator. You know, the coaches get a few gray hairs, but as a spectator, it's the you know the best way to watch. You know, it's so much fun. I've had the uh, I've had the luxury, the fortune. I've been I've had the good fortune of broadcasting some of these regional tournaments, especially at the D three level when they had the regional tournaments. And I got to tell you, they were so close. The games were amazing. And I always tell the story of when Aquinas won the D3 tournament, national championship. They had to qualify out of the regional. They were the third seed in their region. And just to get to nationals, they had to win one to nothing uh, against Lawrence Tech. And so um, in the southeast region, Florida Gulf Coast and Liberty, one and two um, mainstays at the Division II level. Of course, Florida Gulf Coast losing in the national tournament, the national championship game last year to uh, the University of Mary in triple overtime. So I know Florida Gulf Coast is probably using that as a uh, little bit of motivation to get back to nationals. Again, Bob Brinkworth's team always at the national tournament. Liberty there as well, mainstays. And you go from three right down to 14, North Carolina, North Carolina State. Uh, NC State has been to the nationals the last few years. Finally, in the West, we talk about the University of Mary. Again, they are the two-time national defending champions. This will be their last year at the D2 level. Then they're moving up to D1. And uh, they hold down the number one spot in the West. Montana State is two. Then you go again from three to 14, all the way from uh, University or Utah State University, 
all the way down to Arizona State. They will again play in a regional tournament as well, and two more teams will qualify for that uh, as well. So there you go. Those are the D2 rankings. Uh, real quick, let's get into the men's Division Three rankings, and uh, we'll bring those up for you, and uh, we'll give you an idea where some of the teams land there. Now, we mentioned that uh, it's the top 16 teams in Division Three, and they all play in pool play. Uh, but there are no regionals anymore because the amount of teams has dropped off at the D3 level at the national scene. So they take the top 16 teams. And these rankings were as of last week as well. The two-time defending national champion, Hope College, they're at number one right now at 18-1. and one. Uh, Missouri State at two. You can see it there. Notre Dame at three. Arkansas, they've been to the final four the last two years of the national tournament. So they know what it's like to get there. Saginaw Valley at five. Uh, they're having a great, great year. Michigan at six. They were in the uh, finals last year. Lawrence Tech at seven. Air Force Academy at eight. Grand Valley was at the Nationals last year. They're at nine. Purdue at 10. Missouri at 11. Right down to uh, Florida Gulf Coast at 16. Miami at 15. Nebraska. They're usually a uh, participant at Nationals every year. They're at 14. New Mexico, they've been there quite a few times. They're at 13. So the top 16 teams go in men's Division Three, and then they play pool play for three days. They get three games, and then, of course, the winner of each pool, they get the semifinals and the finals. Um, play, you know, the, they take the top four and play in the semis and, of course, a championship game. And finally, um, at uh, let's take a look at the women's Division One rankings. As we wrap up the show here tonight, um, and you can see Liberty on top, uh, number one. These rankings, as of course, through last weekend, Adrian called. Nothing's really changed in the top seven. You've got Midland at three, Indiana Tech at four, Minot State at five, Michigan at six, Miami at seven, McKendry and Maryville flip flopped eight and nine. Other than that, it's pretty much the status quo in uh, women's division one. They take the top 10 teams. It's double elimination. It's a little bit of a twist there. You got buys involved, obviously. So it's obviously important to get in the top. I would say probably the top seven because they have automatic berths as well. So you want to kind of make sure you don't have to sweat it out as well at the division one level for the ladies. So, yeah, it's kind of a look at what's going on this week in uh, the ACHA. As we wrap things up here on the ACHA Power Play uh, on this uh, January the 24th, 50, 52 days away from puck drop at Marlboro, Massachusetts, the site of the 2023 National Tournament just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. So it's getting close. You've got conference tournaments coming up here in the next month, uh, teams wrapping up regular season play, and it's getting it's really kind of getting tight now. It's a lot of fun. This we talk about it at the beginning of the year in September. We think, my goodness, six months away, and it flies, man. It really does. And now this is where it's getting in the nitty-gritty. You got these teams jockeying around for position to try to sneak into nationals, trying to get into the regional tournament at the D2 level, uh, solidifying their spot. Like we talked with Brianna Veal from uh, Sioux College. They take the top four teams out of their region. And so you know they want to kind of get their position solidified even if they may stumble in the regional tournament, I would say they're a pretty good bet that they're going to be going. But some of these teams, they're not too sure yet. And we mentioned at the Division I level, it's still uh, up for grabs. So, hey, we're going to be right there with you, right up until the national tournament. And again, like we said, we're going to have a wrap-up show every night at the national tournament. Exciting, Excited to bring that to you. I'll host that every night at the conclusion of play and we'll have a complete rundown there with guests with with coaches players you name it really looking forward to that being a huge part of the national tournament at uh marlboro massachusetts just outside of boston the 2023 acha nationals the road to boston is going strong and we're right front and center right here on the acha power play well that's going to do it tonight for our show again we want to thank brianne veal the head coach of sioux college the uh, 18 and 0 sioux college cougars ranked number one in women's Division II Central Region. Uh, they got a big weekend against Dakota College in Ashland this weekend. And we want to thank Matt Sikosin 
The head coach of Grand Valley's men's D1 team currently ranked 10th in the country in Division I. They've got a big weekend set with crosstown rival Aquinas. And you can catch that on aqsports.com, yours truly, with the play-by-play Friday night at 8, Saturday at 5.30. We want to thank you, the viewer, for taking time out to watch us tonight. We really appreciate it. Without you, this doesn't happen. We also want to thank the Belly Up Network uh, podcast, bellyupsports.com. We're powered up by them. Without them, it wouldn't be possible as well. So we want to thank them for letting us be a part of their network. Hey, this reminder, keep your heads up, keep your sticks down, keep your feet moving, and as always, keep your minds open. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Tuesday for another edition of the ACHA Power Play. Until then, so long. Be safe. Enjoy the hockey this weekend, will you? All right. We'll see you next Tuesday night right here on the Captain Lou Sports Network with another edition of the ACHA Power Play. So long.